What's happening? This is David LaBrava. You might know me as Happy. I used to be on this motorcycle show. But if you're really paying attention, you're watching Fallbrook Online. That way you know what's up. Right into this world, all alone. God takes your soul, you're on your own. The crow flies straight, a perfect line. On the devil's bed until you die. So now you got a chance to have a voice. You're going to say something good or nothing at all or something bad. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm always, uh, you, you, you don't really, uh, it's sort of happening to you while it's happening to you. You don't see it happening. So it's happening and then you're like, okay, wow, I got a voice. You know what? Uh, I'm try to do something good with my voice, like save dogs and just like try to help this planet, which desperately needs help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. You know, it's a trip to get recognized everywhere and just whatever, just try to do good, change my life. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking down the street, every, everybody's going to you and, oh, happy, happy here, happy there? Not everybody, but a lot, every day, somewhere, everywhere. It's like in season three, they're, they're going, happy, happy. And like in the between season three and four, people started going, David LaBrava. Okay. And like Charlie's my buddy and he's like, yeah. wow, you went from face recognition to name recognition. Yeah. That's a big jump. But okay. Yeah. Um, critics say um, the production is very cr close to reality. I think you were. No, it ain't. It ain't. <laughs> no, it's not. What do not. you think about? So, so also, uh, so I'm the longest human being associated with that project. I yes. had five networks before uh, FX got it. So that project started. I wrote a different movie called The Prospect, and I sent it to a guy who pitched the show named John Linson. So the pitch is the pitch. That means you thought of the idea and you went to the network and you tried to pitch an idea so they bought it. So that went from a, like HBO Star, Cinemax, Showtime, AMC, and then FX bought it in a bidding war. Mm -hmm. So the guy who did the pitch, he's not the writer. So they, FX had a writer, his name is Kurt Sutter, he was from The Shield. Mm -hmm. So they asked, you have a technical advisor, I am really in a motorcycle club, so they hired me to be the technical advisor, but I had already been a cameraman, and I had already been on a little bit of film years earlier. So when the guy met me after a while, he was, I said to him, hey, I want a chance to be on the show like anybody else, like, you're stuck with me, I'm the technical advisor, I ain't going nowhere. And if I don't get it, I don't get it. No big deal. I owned a tattoo shop in Oakland, and I was already living my dream. Mm -hmm. But uh, I actually, I read for TIG, and I didn't get it. And the other guy wrote me. He said, he ain't going to hire you. He's going to hire the, 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 this other guy, Kim Coach, who did a great job. But uh, it, like the one dude is, they're all very smart people. They're all what I would call climbers, you mm -hmm. know, climber. They're climbing to the top. Yeah. And he said, write the guy a letter and tell him that you're going to help the show realistically because of who you really are and visually because of what you look like. Mm -hmm. So I did. And the guy said, you're right. I'm going to create this character for you, Happy the Assassin. Mm -hmm. So I remember on the first, we, we shot a pilot without Ron Perlman. We shot one with uh, Scott Glenn in the clay role. And Emilio was a Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. There were no Mayans. And... I remember I walked up to the guy and I said, why'd you call me happy? You couldn't have called me crazy or loco or something better than happy. And he was like, no, your name's happy and you ain't never happy and that's it. But if you think about it, if he had named me crazy or loco or something else, it probably would never have gone as far as it went because yeah. he named me an emotion, a really cool emotion, mm -hmm. happy. You know what I mean? So it's like people sort of like, wow, the one that's kind of a cool emotion. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. but, what do, you, what do you think has uh, changed in the uh, the reception of the audience after uh, the oh, yeah. big su success of the show, of the TV All right, series? We're, we're, we're going to back up one minute to answer the one question you yeah. just asked about the, the reality of the show. Yeah. So for seven, so in the beginning of the first season, I want I wanted to write a show. I'm a writer. Yeah. I wrote a book. So. I wrote an episode of the show, and the third episode of the first season, I wrote one. I just went home on Thursday, and I started sending it out on Sunday. And Boone called me up. He's like, you're crazy, man. They, they're going to fire you. I said, why is that? He goes, because you're not supposed to write an episode of the show. That's their job. Um, but the guy, Kurt Sutter, man, he gave me a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to let you write in... Uh, Season three or four, I'll let you write one, which is a big jump to be able to write an episode for. You got a big check, and it's a big deal. He goes, but in the meantime, I want you to write a blog. 
and I want you to create. I was already writing for a, a motorcycle magazine. He says, you can't be that guy. You cannot be the guy from your real club. You cannot be happy for my show. You have to create a new guy. So I created a guy called Fat Bob. So on the Sons of Renegade website, it says Fat Bob's blog. Mm -hmm. So the first time I wrote it, I was like, oh, the show's great. The show's this, the show's that. And Kurt walked up to me and said, why are you writing all that? And I said, oh, you want to build up the show? He goes, if you don't tell it like it really is, no one's going to believe you. Mm -hmm. I said, homeboy, the show is so fake. It's amazing. He says, well, then say that. So for seven years, Fat Bob wrote, these guys are nothing like a motorcycle club. They lie to each other. They steal from each other. They bang each other's old lady. They have no honor whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's a television show. Like uh, I enjoy it now at this point, like people write, what does this mean? Or something I write. It means anything you want. It's a, it's a show. Mm -hmm. So it's a show for the audience, as you tell, and it's... Um, overacted and with it's entertainment like entertainment, if you really watch yes. the show we were killing one person every two episodes yeah then we started killing two people an episode and we started rocking out 32 people an episode I mean we killed so many people on that show it was a, it became sort of comedy almost yeah. you know what I mean we'd roll up and the guy says one word we kill everybody there it's it's not real yeah now, people they say like I know so many people that are like uh so these guys roll up in their patches in broad daylight, kill everyone, no cops show up. What planet are they on? Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think has, has uh, when, you, when you tell something like this, what has changed in the view on motorcycle clubs after a, a show where everything goes? Okay, so exactly. So, so for instance, uh, like I said, the public sees the television yeah. uh, and they believe it. So... The television is not real life mm -hmm. at all, okay? The television is made to entertain. And if you pay attention to the motorcycle world, it's a real world out there, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and that influence of that show has overextended the motorcycle world. It's, it's just, it's overextended its boundaries. You know what I mean? Um, I also think that the motorcycle world has changed right mm -hmm. now to when the Sons of Anarchy started to right this moment. Yeah. A lot has happened in the past 15 years, you know, and I, I also like uh, a lot of people that are involved with the show. Like I, I just know a lot of people that are in that business. They're like, I'm not doing another show like that. That was way too violent. I want to do something more mm -hmm. blah, 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 positive or this and that. And it's made you to entertain. You okay. know what I mean? I, I, like uh, it's really weird. The network is interested in seeing, like, it's called Blue Skies. Yeah. They don't want to see Blue Skies. They want to see the impact of somebody's life and how it destroyed all the lives near yeah. them. And that's what is interesting to the public. And it probably makes the public feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's this other thing called Blue Skies where the uh, movie appeals to men, women, boys, girls. It's happy ending, like American movie. Happy ending. Uh, not everything has a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think um, that the show has... Uh, negative impact on the view of the sons of anarchy yeah, on sure the views of, of, of motorcycle clubs in general in real life put it this way uh the people that really believe it yes <laughs> you know what i mean like i see some people freak out about the show i look right at them and go homeboy that's a television show are you freaking out about the sopranos because you ain't in the mob <laughs> you know what i mean uh it's a television show yeah. it's made to entertain you yeah, know and it's like a guys wearing the badge of Sons of Anarchy and... Okay, if you really want to get into it to the fullest extent, you're not going to beat up somebody wearing a Sopranos t-shirt, but yeah. also on the same level, people like me that worked very, very hard to wear what I wear yeah. don't appreciate it when somebody else puts it on because it's a television show. But if you really want to get technical about it, if they don't have an MC on it, yeah. that really doesn't bother me so much. Okay. Also... I don't live in this country. I don't know what it's like here, but you get three times to beat somebody up and you get caught. That's no deal. Yeah. So I'm not going to risk one of my things because this guy's wearing a T-shirt from yeah. a television show that doesn't bother me one bit. It's not in my life. You know what I mean by that? I yeah. have to be careful with my life. I can't throw my life away because some guy's wearing a T-shirt and he thinks he's something he's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, as a writer of a book... Um, How, how is your writing process as an artist? I sit down and write. <laughs> Do you have any special um, I dropped places? out of school in ninth grade. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, no, and you know what? Every, oh, the writer's room. I go to the airport yeah. four hours early, sit down in all the turmoil, and write. 
Okay. So it's to show myself that I don't need to, I got to be in my writer's room with the music on and the light is right and I got to write my words. I don't do that. Okay. But, uh, and also everything is, uh, everything is accomplishing things that you set out to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a, me, I'm, I'm a glass artist. I'm a tattoo artist. I'm a five diploma Harley mechanic. I am a member in good standing in the biggest, largest, baddest, greatest motorcycle club in the world. <laughs> and anybody that's uh, wearing a patch in any club can appreciate exactly what I'm saying, how difficult it is for a man. I don't care what club you're in. If you put a patch on your back, in your mind, you're a badass. You know, that's it. You know, you are no longer a citizen. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know, just I wanted to write a book. I, uh, I made a movie about a morning that I woke up in New York City and did some crazy stuff. So I, I was super lucky. I made a movie called Street Level and I had a, Hollywood's all about friends and relationships and I made a lot of friends and a lot of people, the crew, everybody did the movie for next to nothing. They liked the script. So this is the book that I wrote. And How long he, did it take you to, it to write it. the book? From the day the guy said to me, you should write a book. I said, I can't write a book. He said, you should write a book. I said, I live in a secret society. I, 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 I'm not writing a book. He goes, nobody wants to hear about the secret society, bro. You need to write a book about what got you to the show. That's it. So I thought about it and I thought about it. So I kind of messed around for the first few months, six months. And it basically, the, the book is sort of just all the mistakes that I made, getting arrested over and over and over and over again and all the way up to the show. Because uh, I don't talk about my club, that's my private life, and I did, can't talk about the show either. They have corporate attorneys. You just So I had to be very tricky what I wrote. And like I said, I dropped out, so I made it very reader-friendly. All the, all the chapters are super short, and each chapter is its own little thing, and it's just basically this journey that I went on to okay. get to the show. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you do any, everything right, you're probably not going to learn as much as somebody that makes a ton of mistakes and tries everything, and he probably is going to learn a lot more, I think. Mm -hmm. Is that also um, the first question you told? Um, now you have a voice? And yeah, no, no, exactly. So, so yeah. imagine, like, a lot, a lot of my friends called me up and they said, wow, man, you, like, you did what everybody doesn't want to do. And what are you talking about? He goes, everybody hides their past. You put it out in the whole world, all your mistakes, arrested, all the crazy, stupid, crazy stuff you did. I says, homeboy, if I help even one person find a better way, mm -hmm. that it was worth to do this. Because okay. like, I was a f screwed up individual. Just, uh, you know, I used to live outdoors, on drugs, beat people up to get loaded more. And I did all out of that myself, alone, with no yeah. meeting, without a friend, without anything, just myself to to become a man again. Mm -hmm. So I wrote that, what that was about. And imagine, I was in Bali, and I, you, have to, you sit down, you have to remember this. Like, you have to go back and remember the train of thought you mm -hmm. had at that point of life when I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I don't know how to not do this anymore. So I need to figure out how to not do this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But Was it also a sort of... Um catharsis when you when you wrote this um, yeah it became a thing like yeah. it started slow and then after a while it started to take over everything and you're now sitting there 10 or 12 hours a day so like a book is 80,000 words like a short film is 84 minutes a feature film is 85 minutes mm -hmm. like any size book but really it's a good series 80,000 words which is about that much right there so when I got out of Bali I lent to Bali at 2,000 words when I left Bali at 82,000 words and I now realized how much more I had to write <laughs> which was like I could finally see the end of the journey. So that was like, wow, now, now, and I dedicated the book to my buddy, he got shot at 25, Will, mm -hmm. this is my best friend. Um, then when I came home from Bali, Bali, like it was just like, now everything stops till I finish this book. I'm not gonna go in my glass shop, I'm not tattooing anyone, I'm only gonna wake up and write till I sleep every day, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, um, writer, artist, glass artist, also tattoo, now you're here for the Zurich Inc. days, for the tattoo convention. Um, how important are tattoos for you? And are there any tattoos with a special meaning? For you mean you? on my body or yeah. tattooing people? Yeah. On, both, me, both. on me, they're all like, okay, I, my newest, best ones are my dogs. Okay. Dogs life, these are my norm. Oakland, California. I got to say, I'm always, 
I've had this for now 30 something years. Mm -hmm. So, and I just got my hands done. Even, even my other buddy, Freddie Corbin, he's like, wow, you did your hands. <laughs> you were like one of the first people tattooed and you would never do your hands. And then after a while I said, I want to do it. You know what I mean? But, uh, I started tattooing at Lyle Tuttle's at 62, 72, 82, probably in like 1981. And I, back then, uh, the only people that got tattooed were thugs and marine people yeah. and like, like gangsters, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one of the first members I've seen drag some fool up there. <laughs> but, you know, I did that uh, and I did that and went through the whole, watched that whole thing happen with uh, how blood became a thing. I just watched all of that happen and I dropped out of the tattooing a little bit and then I went to Miami and I started tattooing in a shop, Tattoos by Lou for Ken Caram and Tattoo with Ami and all these other kids that are all famous now, Chris Nunez, Garver, everybody. And just, I always did other things. So tattooing was always like this fallback thing. You could always tattoo, you know? And uh, I really got into glass art when, mm -hmm. that, when the blood thing happened. I got into doing glass and I don't know, tat I like tattooing and it's something I don't want to lose, you yeah. know, but yeah, for sure, my whole life, every dollar I make comes from creating something for this planet, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't mug people no more, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question back to Sons of Anarchy, there will be a spin-off. No, I don't know nothing about nothing about any future of nothing about the Sons of Anarchy, okay. that is not my trip, I'm uh, so not gonna that be is the past okay. for me now. Okay. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that they're doing some new show, and we'll see. I wish them all the best in the world. Okay. Um, back to um, motorcycling. You're also a mechanics. What does I did that? I did that for years. I also yeah. like a man. Like it's like I said, achieving things. Man, you grow up. You want to get on the cover of the magazine <laughs> with your bike. I did that. That that was a huge thing i mean i wrote for the magazine i wrote for the magazine i wrote 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 and i'm like man i want to build a bike and i want to get on the cover of the mag i did it that, that, that was a uh, it's all these check off things yeah. you know what i mean uh but but what does the the bike mean? are I, you still riding your motorcycle what does bike I have mean to two you two bikes that harley yeah. built for me i love riding the bike it's yeah. uh it's like I love surfing. I'm a surfer okay, yeah. for like 40 years. And even my, my brother in Miami is just like, man, riding the bike's always been like your favorite thing. What do you want to do? Let's go ride. I would just not even go nowhere. Just get on my bike, go over the Richmond Bridge, come back over the Golden Gate Bridge, and then come over the Bay Bridge and just park the bike again. We just want to ride. That's it. You <laughs> okay, know, it's, yeah. it's fun. It's the truth. It's like uh, who you want to be. <laughs> you want to be a Viking? I do. It's fun. <laughs> So um, before you told me about your new project, uh, the, the Street Life film. Yeah, so, so the Street Level, I made a movie. Level, it was yeah. actually the first script I wrote, a 14-page script. It was called Despair. So I used to be just a screwed-up guy in drugs. We woke up in the morning. I had a girl that I lived with and lived in New York City. And I wrote a little script about it. And it was just a really cool little script. But like when you write a script, it's like a tree. So it's either linear or you got a lot of branches on the tree. If it's too linear, it's not going anywhere. Nobody's, you know, it was a cool little story, but that's just it. It's a cool little story. So I kept expanding the story and it went from 40 pages. It went up to 72 pages. So in script writing, a page is a minute. When you film, a page is a minute. And, but I'm watching them every week take like a 35 to 42 page script and make an hour out of it. They stretch it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was real lucky, like, like for seven years, man, you're on this show. And for me, it's like, I got dropped into some thing and I'm now going to like hang out with the camera people and sit in the writer's thing and just mm -hmm. learn and learn and absorb everything that they could teach me for free. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. So when it was near the end, I started sending that script out. Hey, you guys want to, it's like, it's not only to write the thing, but to be a producer is to find mm -hmm. somebody else's money to get the cameras to do and then like in the sense of any people was super great to me loma hid my trucks the transportation people and just i made a really cool movie i shot it in 11 days mm -hmm. i got 27 hours of usable footage which is huge <laughs> that's like all the cut action all that's taken out now i have 27 hours to take up my 92 minutes of um so i'm writer producer director i own the company i acted in the film in my first film is Danny Trejo, Robert Patrick, Mark Boone Jr., Drea DiMatteo, 
Jennifer B. Taylor, Charisma Carpenter, Ray Gallegos, Emilio Rivera, Sean Whalen, Barry Del Sherman. Um, yeah, I really, uh, so I like when also, like for me, when you do a film, like here's a film and I hand you, you your character Bible mm -hmm. for your character, why your parents got divorced, and why yeah. you went to juvenile hall at 15 and ended up killing somebody at 18, it's your Bible. So I have everybody's Bible and now the movie came out, I wanted, I wanted all of this to happen. I wanted the book to come out right when the movie came out. Everything had to happen sort of at once. Um, and the movie gets out and some people took notice of the movie and uh, I had a manager, she said, they, they, they want a Bible. I said, what do you mean, the character Bible? She said, no, they, they, they want a series Bible. I didn't even know what that meant. So she sends me a couple series Bibles mm -hmm. to look at that, which is like the lay of the land, the things, who shows up in episode three, yeah. how this goes, where it goes. And I, I sat down for nine days. I wrote a 72 page series Bible about my show. So right now, I, that's why I believe that uh, I know some heavy duty people are <laughs> to make that yeah. show come to series. Okay, but yeah. It's like, a, ain't no show like mine. My show's about addiction. There ain't no shows about addiction. I don't think I got to hear, but on every single channel in my country, you're changing the thing. Like every five commercials, one is to send your screwed up kid to the addiction place yeah. and get him fixed or your whoever. And uh, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's probably a problem that's not going away too soon. Yeah. So like I don't pretend to know the answer. It's just kind of fun to try to figure it out all the time, though, ain't it? Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, um, Take what, time. What, what are your next plans for the future? Are I'm, there I'm any already, other projects you're into? Or? I'm already writing my next book, which okay. is like, so it's not, a, no, I, you write what you know. So I wanted to knock out a book. I wrote a book, it's about me, cool. Uh, now I'm writing a book that, like what you said, I just thought it up. It's, uh, you always write about love or money, that's it. So mm -hmm. I'm writing just another book and uh, I'm in a couple films this year and I'm hoping to, one company looks like they're gonna hire me just to direct a, one of their films. And I also have one of my own projects that we are now, just like before, chasing the money mm -hmm. to make the film. You know, uh, that street level is on all digital platforms. So it's like that, that's like a futures mm -hmm. deal. Like Hollywood's a trippy little place, especially with distribution. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you sign with some one of the big companies, the first thing they do is just like, okay, we're gonna tell you when everything happens, we're gonna tell you how it happens, we're gonna tell you when you get your money, and da 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 da. But this is now, not yesterday. So now we have things called social media yeah. for free. So I self-published this book, I promoted it myself. It's the same thing with, uh, with the film. I, I had a couple showings and I invited all the companies, two companies show up, one company is called Freestyle Digital Media, mm -hmm. and it's like a futures company. So is it like if you go to Netflix, Netflix only lets you deal with Netflix. Yeah. And if you go to uh, if you go to this one company, you're going to deal with the one company. So these people are more like I get to use their connection for a percentage, and right away I'm going to be on uh, Sony, PlayStation, Vudu, Xbox, Hulu. Um, Sling Network, Dish, Dish, Sling TV, Dish Network. I got picked up in 100% of the cable networks in America. I'm really not political at all. I don't pay attention to it one bit. So he called me up and says, what day do you want your movie to come out on? The 8th or the 18th? And he said, the 8th is the presidential election. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wasn't a walk in the park and I got arrested early in life, so I never voted one time and I never had that right and I never thought about it. So I says, isn't the ace called Super Tuesday? And he goes, yeah, Super Tuesday. I go, that's the day, bad day, <laughs> wrong day. You know what I mean? I shouldn't have associated myself with any of that. But it's the movie still, it takes time. It picks yeah. up steam and it's now like, it's always getting out and uh, it's like, uh, like, like now for me, it's very important to write another book and show that's not a flash in the pan. Yeah. It's very important to shoot my next film. I work with some incredible people, Greg Baldy, he, incredible mm -hmm. director of photography and just uh, the whole crew that I work with is the same people I'm working with for seven years. So we have this little family thing happening and, and that's really important. The set should be this very fun, stress-free place. Okay. You know, uh, 
a lot of shows, some shows like the show I was on, you can't, you can't change one word. Yeah. If you change one word on the thing, they're like, cut! And the lady comes out and yeah. goes, DM, and it, it says, like, can you say that correctly, please? And, but, like, on my one, I was just like, do you, do you know the lines? And the guy's like, yeah. I said, cool, make them your own. Yeah. Have fun with them. Okay. Do your thing. Yeah. And everybody really is like, wow, that, that's a, it's a cool thing to give an, an artist the freedom to do that. Yeah, how, how important, I, perhaps, is the final question, because you're an artist on so many levels. Um, how important is freedom for you? Everything. That's a, one of the, the importance of that deal was that I kept control that I kept control of how my movie was going to get out, how it was going to get promoted. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to change anything on my movie. And no I, censorship. I, yeah, no, it's, it's, this is my movie. And if it fails or succeeds, it's on me. You know what I mean? Uh, if you do with the network and it fails, it don't matter. They'll still blame you. You know what I mean? Uh, the, like, uh, you know what? I, I made my mom proud. So that was super important for me in my life because I wasn't no walk in the park going through life. And, and now I see, like, a, like, a, like I said, I'm already living my dream. Everything could stop. I'm living my dream, mm -hmm. which is cool. So now just want to make the dream bigger and dream as big as I can and uh, try to make a difference on this planet. Uh, you know, uh, That's it, try to make a difference for the better for the planet. There's enough scumbags in the world. So just trying to do good in the world, you know, and uh, okay, yeah. help dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, dogs are it. Yeah, I think that's a cool um, end. And if you're in Los Angeles, we'll give my friend a free plug. Go to Trejo's Tacos because the food is great. <laughs> So thank you very much. No, it's my pleasure, man. Thank very you for coming. Nice. Yeah, truly.